The Department of Biology at the University of Bergen has a mesocosm facility at its marine field station which is located in Espergren, south of Bergen. This spring, 22 people from 11 different countries are participating in mesocosm experiments there. We are trying to look at the few questions that are interconnected. One thing is this old question of whether this, uh, the basic algae, microalgae in the, in the ocean, the diatoms, actually are the staple food for the important zooplankton, then its turn is also the staple food for the fish. Diatoms has been thought as being the main primary producers that, uh, in the first step in the straight classic food chain up to fish for many decades. And it turns out that diatoms are potentially either not so nutritious as we thought before, or it might also even be toxic. So to find out about that, we have actually tried to assemble a number of scientists that has been uh, promoting these different questions. Well, this uh, possibility of coming and work in mesocosm is, uh, yeah, first, first of all, this is an international group that comes together that we are interested in a similar question. And uh, we can, uh, as a big group, we can work with a different kind aspects of biology that are developing in the mesocosms. A number of the international experts who have gathered at Espigrin have brought their own specialized tools. One of the main advantages of these instruments are they're, they're, they're fast. We save lots of time. They, they provide the same data that in many cases have taken a, a, a skilled taxonomist or student hours and hours of work. This is a, a, in a C2 flow cytometer. It's really powerful in, in visualizing, understanding and counting the, uh, the phytoplankton that we have, have out here. Uh, what we have here are the flow cam running. Uh, what we see on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the monitor here are the different particles being acquired and uh, there's, there's a screen here which is the video camera and you might be able to see the little particles that flashes by. Each little red spot represents a particle. So we can do this selection set and we can go out here and we can do a sort and we can sort the things on size, and we, let's look at the big parties that I'm interested in this analysis. We also have a German group here now, and they are working with the chemistry in a, for us, new way. Uh, we all know that on, on land, we know that there are a lot of chemistry that has a very big role as, as signals between organisms. For instance, we know that insects won't find each other without pheromones. We know that a lot of uh, uh, plants defend themselves against predators with toxins, etc. There is a, uh, is a warfare and a signal system between a lot of organisms. In the sea, this is hardly investigated. It's investigated for specific plants or for specific organisms in specific places, but especially in the marine systems, this is very little known about. Yeah, we are also working with some new molecular methods we actually developed here in Bergen together with some of our American colleagues. And this is to look on the zooplankton, what they actually are feeding in the sea. The only way of getting at this is to, to, to collect these animals and look what they are eating by analyzing the gut content by modern molecular methods. So we will now connect uh, all these different uh, uh, sciences we do here to see whether this uh, can answer this, uh, uh, this big question whether diatoms, diatoms are uh, good food or not for the zooplankton. <laughs>